Good morning. Welcome to the Brookings United Church of Christ. Good to see you all this morning. So, we will start our worship service as we do each week. We, well, well, first of all, we want to welcome those joining us on Facebook Live as well. But uh, we'll start our worship service with a few announcements that uh, Mary's going to share with us at this time. Good morning. I'm not going to read all the details of this long page, but I will highlight some of the things that are coming up. And of course, <clears throat> one of the important things is the December cause of the month, <clears throat> and it is celebrating children and the dedicated people who help provide loving and safe child care. And as part of that, um, there is a tree at the back with the cards that you can take and <clears throat> find a uh, a gift either for the daycare as a whole, something that they would all use, <clears throat> or an individual gift for a child. So check that out before you go home. <clears throat> also, as part of our cause of the month, <clears throat> Kristen Edmonds is collecting good, gently used toys for the kids in Hamlin County. And it mentioned here that they don't have the programs that we have here in, in Brookings, and there is, is a need. And uh, she said, if you happen to have toys, I don't anymore, but some of you may, or you might know somebody who doesn't know where to take them, um, yeah, <clears throat> uh, she can take care of them. And anything else you want to say about that? Okay, ask any questions you have. Okay, on the, uh, the 22nd, we will be doing our last five for five offering, <clears throat> which is the Christmas fund. Uh, and there's information in the bulletin about the fund. So, and that offering is, you can put it in the plate, I guess, labeled. Okay. Uh, something to chew on. <clears throat> we continue to meet with a potluck uh, and followed by uh, a program it's often a video that <clears throat> we then talk about and that's on Wednesday night and everybody's welcome I love to go to that <clears throat> it's especially good if you don't if you're living alone and have nobody to talk to <clears throat> yeah uh, this church is very good at talking and <laughs> so uh, join us it's, it's, we're a welcoming group Coffee and conversation will continue uh, at from 10.30 to 11.30 at the uh, Cottonwood um, um, Coffee House. So anybody that is not working or otherwise occupied, it's, it's fun. I, I just, it's, it's a good discussion. It, it, it relates what's going on in the world <clears throat> to our faith, which, and we, again, we have a good discussion. <clears throat> and... <clears throat> And the last thing is a reminder that if you're not here every Sunday, uh, that a good way to give is to set up uh, an account with a bank so it's automatically taken out. And I do that even though I am here almost every Sunday because if I go on vacation, I don't have to think about it. They'll just take my, my, uh, my money directly from my bank. Um, so, and otherwise, the plate's at the back, it should go out. Any other announcements that I might have missed? All right. Thank you, Mary. And just one, one last thing about uh, our ca cause of the month. If you take uh, one of those uh, cards off the tree, if you would bring it back uh, by two Sundays from now, the 22nd, and then we'll uh, distribute those Monday the 23rd. So they have them for, for Christmas Eve there. So we've got two weeks to, to make that happen and pick those up on your way out after worship today. So just, yeah, before we, uh, before we uh, sing our opening uh, hymn here, number 44, I just want to actually welcome uh, Madeline Francis, who has come over from uh, the LDS Church and is blessing us with the uh, gift of music this morning as um, uh, both Rachel and Lauren are preparing for their Yuletide uh, choir concert uh, today, this afternoon. So um, anyway, thank you for being here, Madeline. So now I will invite you all to stand. We'll join together in singing uh, 
number 44, Beautiful Jesus. read responsively. In this season of prophecy, promise, and preparation, we come to be renewed and refreshed. We come to be inspired by stories of a Messiah who will change the world and change us. We come to listen to, for words of promise and challenge and a message of love. We come with open ears, open minds, and open hearts. We come to receive the blessings God has in store for us in this season of waiting. Come, let us worship our God, the one who brings all things to fulfillment. Please take this moment to greet your neighbors this morning. Good morning. <laughs> So at this time, we will have the, or yeah, you may be seated, <laughs> the lighting of the Advent candle with the Edmonds family. Let your light shine, let your spirit soar, throw open your mind, hand over your heart, here it comes, love. It shines in the darkness and it sings in the shadows, it will not cower and cannot be contained. 
It was the hope of the saints, the call of the prophets. It was the fire in the belly of John the Baptist. It was the faith and love of his mother Elizabeth and the courage of Jesus' mother Mary. Lamp in the window, beacon on the hill, star in the night sky. Love you, love you lead us home. May it light the way. All right, thank you. And so now we'll enter into, uh, as we do each week, our time of sharing of joys and concerns, things we want to celebrate together as a church family, things we want to ask for prayers from our brothers and sisters. And so we'll have the passing off of the microphone back to Mary here. And if you have something to share this morning or lift up. I'll go ahead and start. Um, Marilyn is recovering slowly. um, And Dawn is home this morning because it it takes most of the morning to get her moving and going in the morning. But she goes back to the doctor this week, her primary care physician, for some more testing and then Hopefully she'll then be entering cardiac rehab, and so the recovery is, will maybe speed up just a little bit more, but prayers for both of them as they continue down this journey of recovery. Lisa. I'd like to just lift up the caregivers like um, Dawn and like Gary who are dealing with their mothers and um, just people who are the caregivers that carry the weight, lift them up. And for Mark's dad, who has similar things like Marilyn has going on with her heart, um, he was in the hospital this week too. So just um, especially hard this season. Gary. I feel like I should introduce myself. It's been a long harvest. (laughs) Uh, My wife took off at Thanksgiving when the kids were here, so she left, so I enjoyed your comments about the church likes to talk because there's nobody at home. She even took the dog, so. (laughs) But on a more serious note, we should remember the people of Syria and uh, battles and revolution that's going on there, so if we could. Yeah and the innocent civilians that are always um, caught up in uh, the midst of those conflicts are always the one who suffered the greatest. So, yes, the people of Syria, keep them in our prayers. Uh, I actually have a concern today. (laughs) Sorry about that, I guess i got to switch brands. (laughs) But um, my grandfather is going through starting to go through treatment to treat his bladder cancer, which he recently came down with. So if you could just, like, offer your prayers to him, that would be great. And his name, Eric? Um, Edward Wagner is his name. Edward. Thanks, Eric. And Kayleen. So just switching it up again, um, I just wanted to uh, celebrate, um, Bryce and I, we just celebrated our 100-day anniversary, so, yeah. (laughs) Now, the the real question is, you knew that, did he know that? (laughs) (laughs) All right, I see how it is. We'll keep celebrating, it's a good thing. (laughs) Well, congratulations, yes. (laughs) And I remember that day, beautiful summer day at McCrory Garden. Yeah, what a blessing. So, if there are no others, let's come to the Lord in a moment of silent prayer, lifting up all these things that were mentioned, as well as our individual prayers, and I will lead us then into the Lord's Prayer.
Gracious God, we come to you this morning as we do each, each week with a, a combination of joys and, and concerns, things we're celebrating uh, together as your people, God, as well as asking our brothers and sisters to, to pray for um, people and situations. As you've heard this morning, God, the, the names of those who are in need of your uh, healing touch, that your spirit would be with them, your spirit, spirit of peace and perseverance and, and healing, God. And we thank you for those who are uh, the caregivers uh, for those who are ill and, and in life transition stages. Uh, God, continue to um, give them courage and strength uh, for the day as well, God. And we lift up, as we said earlier, uh, people who around the world are in the midst of conflict and war and so often uh, the people who are um, the hardest hit in all of these conflicts are innocent civilians who just want to live life and want to raise families and, and, and want to live together uh, in peace. And God, so we know that your son came as the, the prince of, of peace to show us what um, love truly looks like. It's not just the absence of, of conflict. It is uh, an active and outward uh, expression. And so God, help us to receive um, the love and the example of your son, Jesus, as we seek to spread that throughout the world through our individual lives. And so we lift up and pray all these things in the name of Jesus as we pray together now the prayer that he taught us to pray together in saying, our Creator God, who reigns in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's join together in singing hymn number 110. Now bless the God of Israel.
let us join together in our unison prayer this morning, it's in our bulletins as well as on the screens before you. Heavenly God, today we give thanks for your love that came down to us in human form. You sent your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love descended from heaven to be born of a peasant girl. Love lay in the scratchy hay of a manger in a meager barn in Bethlehem. All of your love, God, was robed in the delicate skin of a baby and wrapped in swaddling clothes. The second week of Advent helps us to reflect on the magnitude of love that was made manifest in Jesus. But we confess, God, that there are times when we fall short of the love you have shown us and which Jesus has taught us. There are other hurts we have caused to our families and friends which we would like to forget. There are those we believe are impossible to love and so we don't try. There are people who live on the edge of our society and we ignore their cries for help. Forgive us, O oh God, who comes near to us when we have lost our way, show us yours. Lead us in humility down the streets of your kingdom. Teach us your truth so we might be able to display your love revealed to us in Christ, our Lord and Savior. Loving God, we seek you. We know your love is a gift offered freely to all people. In the season of Advent, renew in us a commitment to share your love with everyone. As we prepare for the birth of your Son, may your love be a comfort to us now and in the days to come. May your love fill our hearts and grace our lips so that we might bring love to a world that so desperately needs it. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And so at this time I, I had intended to share with you uh, this song, A Door, on my guitar, but I ended up uh, hurting my finger a little bit a couple of days ago, and so the, the guitar really wasn't going to happen this morning. So instead, I, I am letting the original uh, singer and author of this song, uh, Chris Tomlin, sing it for you at this time.
Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. So the scripture I'd like to share with you all this morning is from the letter to the Ephesians. It's uh, chapter 3, verses 8 through 21. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, He graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was His eternal plan, which He carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. So please don't lose heart because of my trials here. I am suffering for you, so you should feel honored. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love, and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Love makes the world go round. Love is the answer. Love is a many splendored thing. And of course, Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. <laughs> it seems since the beginning of time, this word has been bandied about in many different forms to convey many different meanings. But this morning we're going to explore this word from a gospel perspective as we continue in week two of our Advent series I've entitled The Elements of Advent. So last week we looked at several different aspects within the Christian theme of hope. Now we're, gonna, one, we're one week further into the journey. And we'll reflect on the theme of God's love for us. In these times, as we ponder the state of the world as well as the state of our own personal lives, it's sometimes difficult to comprehend God's love for us. But we must receive it before we are able to share it with the world. Let's pray for that very thing.
So as I was thinking about this week's Advent theme of love, I didn't choose one of the normal birth narratives or, or stories. I chose this passage from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian church within the city of Ephesus, which is now on the west coast of what is now modern-day Turkey. And at the start of these verses, he begins to describe the tangible expressions of God's love as well as his calling. In verses 8 and 9, Paul says, Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. So as I was working on this message and contemplating God's love for us and God's mysterious plan, as Paul says, and the treasures of Christ, I came across the story. It's the story of a Hindu, Hindu temple called the Sri Padmanabh Swami Temple. Say that three times fast. And, but how in 2011, the Supreme Court of India ruled that those seeking to open one of those locked vaults, which was several centuries old, could proceed. And what the investigators found was a staggering horde of gold coins and statues of gods and goddesses studded with diamonds and other precious stones. The value of that treasure was estimated at $22 billion. The valuables were donated to the temple by devotees over hundreds of years, and India's royal family had been the custodian, has been since then, excuse me, the custodian of of the treasures. But just a year later, In 2012, Forbes magazine reported that another vault had been found to contain a treasure estimated at $1 trillion. So the story made me think about how for hundreds of years, this incredible treasure existed, but the people of India knew nothing about it. And I saw a correlation to how, likewise, these people in the city of Ephesus knew nothing of this incredible love of God and the endless treasures available to them in Christ until Paul witnessed to them and established the church there. So in verse 10, Paul then writes about the role of the church in saying God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Now, did you catch that? Paul is saying here that the purpose of God's mysterious plan was for the church, meaning all the Christians who have gone before us and now us here today, to show the wisdom of God's love to the rulers of heaven. A commentary in my office describes the meaning of this, the verse in this way. It says, The church becomes a mirror through which the bright ones of heaven see the glory of God. Wow. This means that the love of God, which is poured out on us, is what the angelic realm sees in us, Christ's church. Do you think that's fully true? If it's not, how can it become more true? I thought about this as I I read Paul's words in in verse 16, which say, I pray that from his glorious and unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And so as we focus more intently upon sharing God's love with those around us during the season of Advent, we often equate that with buying things for others. As we just heard, God has unlimited resources resources to pour out upon us, but no matter how rich or poor each of us are, our resources are limited, monetarily speaking anyway. That's why it's so disturbing each year, beginning with Black Friday or even before, how we focus so intently on sharing the love of God through purchasing material gifts. Obviously, the desire to reflect God's love is a good thing, but the unintended consequences of our out-of-control consumerism are a problem. Some of you may be 
familiar with the name Morgan Spurlock. He produced a documentary called Supersize Me. Well, he also produced, though, another lesser-known documentary entitled, What Would Jesus Buy? And Lisa and I started uh, watching this so, some time ago, but it was kind of goofy, so I, I remember we didn't get all the way through. But, but this documentary follows a fictional minister named Reverend Billy and w- what he called the Church of Stop Shopping Gospel Choir. And he's traveling the nation, warning the masses of a pending shopocalypse. And he was arrested in Times Square for blocking the road and preaching a two-word sermon. Stop shopping. Reverend Billy and his entourage put out a wake-up call to mall junkies everywhere, exercising the demons from assorted cash registers and credit cards as he urges consumers to return to a more authentic relationship with Christmas. Despite its goofiness, this movie serves to remind us to focus on the only gift that truly matters, the gift of love, which we are called to share with others. Once upon a time, there was a a man who worked very hard just to keep food on the table for his family. And this particular year, a few days before Christmas, he was upset with his little five-year-old daughter after learning that she had used up the family's only roll of expensive gold wrapping paper. His money was tight. He became even more upset when on Christmas Eve he saw that his child had used all of the expensive gold paper to decorate one box she had put under the Christmas tree. He also was concerned about where she had gotten the money to buy what was ever in the shoebox. Nevertheless, the next morning, the little girl, filled with excitement, brought the box to her father and said, This is for you, Daddy. As he opened the box, the father was embarrassed by his earlier overreaction, now regretting that he had got upset with her. But when he opened the shoebox, he found it was empty. And again, he was upset. You know, a young lady said harshly, when you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside the package. Little girl looked up at him with sad tears rolling down her eyes and whispered, Daddy, it's not empty. I blew kisses into it until it was all full. Father was crushed. He fell on his knees and put his arms around his precious little girl. And he begged her to forgive him for his unnecessary anger. In a very real sense, each of us has been given an invisible golden box filled with unconditional love and kisses from our God this Advent. Sadly, for many in our world today, they see only an empty box. But for those of us who have received the mystery of the gospel message, we recognize these kisses come in the form of a baby, Jesus, the Lord and Savior. There's no more precious gift of love that anyone could possess. As we receive this gift, Paul says in verse 17, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. I love this image of our roots growing down into God's love. So when we envision God's love as the soil of our faith, which we are sown, in which we are sown, nothing that happens to us on the surface can keep our roots from providing the nutrients of that love which results in new life. Those who have hearts firmly planted in the love of God, who put their roots down deep, clenching the fertile promise of what the gospel has to offer, are the kind of folks that you can't uproot. When the unrighteous flourish, but They are suddenly confronted with a crisis that pulls them from the comforts of the world. They quickly wither and die. But the righteous, those those clinging to Christ are stubborn. They will not wither, but simply draw upon their roots again when hard times are past. In the next verse, 
Verse 18, Paul says, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. So as, as I was reflecting upon this verse, I thought about the world that the Apostle Paul would have observed and the references he would have used in writing this. He most certainly walked within 10 miles of Mount Hermon, which is in modern-day Syria, on his way from his home in the town of Tarsus, modern-day Turkey, to Jerusalem. That mountain is over 9,200 feet high. Who knows if he ever would have made the trek over to the 17,000-foot Mount Ararat in now far eastern Turkey, which would have been about an 18-day walk from him for him from Tarsus. But it is certain that he would have never seen the 29,000-foot high Mount Everest. And even though Paul sailed the Mediterranean Sea several times, people of his day would have had no way of knowing how deep it was and its deepest point, its deepest reported point is over 17,000 feet. That's roughly the size of Mount Ararat. But of course, no one could have imagined in that time that the deepest point of the oceans, specifically the Pacific Ocean, is actually 36,000 feet deep. That's nearly seven miles deep and over a mile deeper than the height of Mount Everest. Yet despite how wide and long and high and deep these earthly formations are, they're minuscule compared to the love of God as expressed through a tiny baby named Jesus. So next, next Paul says in the first half of verse 19, may you experience the love of Christ that though it is too great to understand fully. This brings to mind the story of um, one of the greatest theologians that ever lived, Karl Barth. And one day he was asked to be a guest lecturer at the University of Chicago Divinity School. And at the end of a captivating closing lecture, the president of the seminary announced that Dr. Bart was not well and was quite tired. And though he thought that Dr. Bart would like to be open for questions, he shouldn't be expected to handle the strain. So he said, Therefore, I will ask just one question on behalf of us all. He turned to the renowned theologian, Bart, and asked, Of all the theological insights you've ever had, which do you consider to be the greatest of them all? It was a perfect question for a man who had written literally tens of thousands of pages of some of the most sophisticated theology ever put into print. The students held their pencils right up against their writing pads, ready to take down verbatim the premier insight of one of the greatest theologians of their time. Karl Barth closed his tired eyes, and he thought for a minute, and then he half-smiled, opening his eyes and said to those young seminarians, the greatest theological insight I have ever had is this. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. This simple, childlike, yet profound truth is the foundation of what we need to know about God's love for us. And when we understand and accept this truth, as the second half of verse 19 says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. May we all, this Advent season, experience this fullness and power of God's love. And in Paul's words, glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we come to you in this season of, of Advent, reflecting upon uh, the themes of hope and peace and joy, 
and love. Let us this day uh, go from this place reflecting upon the love that you have for us, God, the love that you showed how far and high and deep and wide it is expressed in the tiniest of a baby named Jesus who came to show us how to love and how to live in love of one another. And so, God, we thank you for this uh, tremendous gift. May we hold it and share it with the world. Amen. And so at this time, as we are in the second Sunday of the month, we uh, are going to come together and, and share at this uh, table, the, the table that Jesus shared with his disciples at a place called the Upper Room where he met the evening before his crucifixion and he, at the table, took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks to God and he said to his disciples, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember how likewise he took a cup and gave thanks to his Father in heaven, said to his disciples, take, drink this all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant given for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we have a, a, available here uh, two different cups for anyone who is um, needing to be gluten-free. Uh, we also have uh, that bread here as well. Just let me know as you come forward. And so we pray at this time that these elements of bread and juice would become for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. So this table is open to all. It's a table of thanksgiving. That's the meaning of the word Eucharist. And so we invite you to Come in this season of Advent, especially uh, giving thanks for all God has done and the ways that we have been blessed in our lives and that we can share this thank thankful blessedness with others. And I'm going to invite Mary to come at this time. And the table is set. I invite you to come, partake.
And so I'd like you, I'd like to invite you to stand once more if you're able for the singing of our closing hymn this morning. It's number 104, We Hail You God's Anointed. of the benediction. As you go from this place, may you indeed hail the name of God through showing and reflecting God's love to the world around us. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Don't forget the Advent tree on your way out today. <laughs>